Okay, we're going to be talking about the endocrine system. The endocrine system is basically the body's second great controlling system outside of the nervous system. So it has influence over your entire body and how it works and how it functions. It influences the metabolic activity of all the cells, all of it by hormones. Hormones are these chemical substances secreted by the cells into the fluid, and they've got a wide, wide range of functions, um, but they basically regulate the me metabolic function of other cells. So they might stimulate mitosis, they may alter the membrane permeability, which means they kind of control what goes into and out of a cell. They might activate or deactivate other enzymes, which play a role in different chemical reactions that are happening in the body. Or they induce secretions to be released. So they have lag times ranging from seconds to hours, um, but they tend to have prolonged effects. And they're classified as either an amino acid-based hormone or a steroid hormone. Target cells are the cells that a hormone targets, obviously. So hormones circulate all throughout the tissue, but they only activate their target cells. So you wouldn't want a hormone cell that was designed to um, stimulate reproductive cells going to your heart and stimulating some cells there. So the target cells must have specific receptors on them to which that hormone binds. These receptors may be intracellular, meaning that they're inside the cell, or they're located on the plasma membrane. So hormones, uh, or hormones can either be upregulated or downregulated. So upregulation means the target cells form more receptors in response to the hormone. So the hormone binds and the cell is stimulated to add more receptors so that more hormones can bind. Down regulation is that the target cells lose receptors in response to a hormone. So it's whether a hormone is, is turning on a cell's activity or shutting it down. So the concentrations of circulating hormones reflect the rate of release of that hormone, the speed of the inactivation and removal from the body. Because even when you release uh, you know, a hormone to do some kind of job, you don't want that high concentration of hormone being there forever. It needs to be um, taken back down or down-regulated. So, for example, um, blood sugar. Whenever you've eaten a big meal, you release a whole bunch of insulin that allows that blood sugar to be taken into your bloodstream. But you wouldn't want that insulin, that high amounts of insulin, to stay in your body forever because then you would start to become hypoglycemic. So it would, um, you would you would go out of balance. So eventually that insulin that was there needs to be gotten rid of. So they should vary within a normal range. And they're controlled by neural, which is your brain, humoral, which is your body, or hormonal act activity. So hormones can affect the release and activity of other hormones. Hormones are removed from the body or from the blood by degrading enzymes, the kidneys, or certain liver enzymes. The nervous system can override normal endocrine controls, for example, again, blood sugar levels. These are normally controlled by endocrine glands, but during periods of high stress, uh, the body needs more glucose, so the hypothalamus stimulates the release of more glucose into the blood. So just think about a situation where you have a lot of adrenaline going. Maybe you've got to run for your life. Someone's chasing after you. So your nervous system, all of a sudden, your muscles and your brain and your lungs and your heart are going to need a whole lot more fuel. So the nervous system can override all your normal endocrine function and stimulate the release of a bunch of blood sugar. It can also stimulate the blood vessels to constrict, the heart rate to rise, diverting blood to different places like the heart, the brain, and the muscles. So your nervous system plays a very important role when you need it to. Excess amounts of hormones can also have a detrimental effect on the body. It can cause depression of the immune system, um, can cause cardiovas cardiovascular disease. So when people have an excess amount of stress hormone, um, which is, is, is designed to be there for times when you're in a fight-or-flight situation, 
running for your life, or there's some kind of adrenaline. You, you need all those stress hormones fueling your body. But once that, that threat is gone, those should go down and you should go back into a more relaxed state. If you never go back into that relaxed state, those hormones, that excess of those stress hormones, start affecting your heart and your cardiovascular system, causing disease. It can also inhibit inflammation um, and depress bone formation. The organs of the endocrine system uh, include the gonads, which secrete sex hormones, uh, the pineal glands, which secrete melatonin, thymus secretes thymosin, which has an immune function, yeah, the heart, skin, GI tract, placenta, kidneys, and fat also secrete hormones. And you have a wide range of other hormones, uh, and we're going to go through each of these in class and learn what each of those does. Same thing with these. So exposure to pesticides, industrial chemicals like arsenic, dioxin, and other uh, soil and water pollutants can disrupt hormone function. So sex hormones, thyroid hormones, and glucocorticoids are vulnerable to the effects of pollutants. And interference with these glucocorticoids may explain high cancer rate in certain areas. Female hormone production declines. Um, the ability to bear children ends after a certain point. And the problems associated with this estrogen deficiency can be things like osteoporosis will begin to occur. Testosterone also diminishes with age, but its effect is not usually seen until very old age. Growth hormone levels also decline with age, which for accounts, accounts for the fact that older people tend to have less muscle mass. Supplemental growth hormone may spur muscle growth and reduce body fat and help, physique, uh, help the physique. The thyroid hormone also declines with age, causing lower uh, basal metabolic rates. And the parathyroid hormone levels remain fairly constant throughout age. Um, and lack of estrogen in women makes them more vulnerable to bone demineralizing effects of the parathyroid hormone. Um, so the more exercise you get as an older person can help offset some of these problems.